Hello, my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and today I'm going to be looking at Color Theory and the final episode in the series which is compliments. If that's something you're interested in, please stay with me after a short introduction and join me in the studio. I can't wait. See you then. Oh good, you decided to join me in the studio. Now, we've already gone through two sections of this series and this is the final episode. And it is quite laborious, so if you don't want to be bored, don't hang around for long. But if you're interested in compliments, then this is the place to be. Now, as you can see on the board, we've already discussed hues. Um, very quickly, it's a red hue, orange hue, yellow hue, uh, etc, 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 etc an intensity then of that color um, and that shows how bright and how dull it is and then your value scale where upon the scale it actually sits that particular uh, intensity or chroma of color will sit around about by there tints is a color when you add white a shade is a, a color when you add black and by adding a black and a white a gray or it is another way of making a gray i will discuss that in a minute and you can actually gray down the, um, the color to get a tone. Now, the complements, as you can see here, are normally associated with the opposite side of a color wheel. And if you have a look at the color wheel I've got here, um, what's directly opposite the red is a green. And there you go. So the complement of red is green. Now, yellow opposite of yellow if we go across there we'll see it's a violet so the the complement of a yellow is a violet and again with blue it's an orange so they sit really really well together so you might ask what if we actually mix a red and a violet what will that actually look like well it, it, it gets a bit disconcerting when we do things like this because they don't actually sit well together on the scale. Okay, so let's put let's put the actual complement um, of green, which is going to be red. Let's um, let's put a bit of red around green and see what what happens with that. And the dominant color on this particular um, canvas is red. So that's what we call a dominant color. So if you can, just give me one second. There we go. A bit tired tonight. Been a busy day. I've been decorating my our bedroom. So I am a bit shattered to say the least. Yes. There you go. As you can see. Let's go to camera two. As you can see, um, the dominant color is actually red and the green. So they, they balance quite well together. So what if we actually make, let's wash my brush, the dominant color green. Well, let's, let's have a look what happens there. So now the red is a submissive. And the green is dominant so if somebody says that we got a, a dominant or submissive color then the 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 part that's got the most color in in that case in this case is green this is going to be a dominant color on this swatch so there's less red more green but still a complement so they still complement each other really, really well as we leave those two there. So that's what a dominant and a submissive color is. When somebody says it's a dominant color, so primarily it's that color. So if it's more green than red in that case, then green is dominant. If it's more red than green, then red is dominant. Okay, so now what happens if we mix 
see a yellow with the red which is not a compliment not in the true sense of the word anyway there is a there is other things we need to look at to explain um, compliments and how colors work together and this is a very brief I'm trying to make it a brief video I don't know how brief it's going to be but you can see that that just really hurts the eyes when you look at that compared to the green and the red there because the yellow is dominant and the red is submissive but green is dominant in there and the red is submissive but that's a lot easier on the eyes than that so that's quite punchy and it doesn't look it doesn't sit well then it doesn't it doesn't marry well together so that's all we're talking about when we say the compliments is one color complements the other it's as simple as that it's not over complicated Okay, so I'm trying not to make this too complicated and I can get confused myself sometimes. So it's not, it's just not easy, especially being me, trying to make things easy. But um, I hope that makes sense where that you, when you've got two colours that don't really sit well together, they don't look nice. So you, you need to think about compliments when you're actually working on um, a painting. Okay, um... In this particular example, let's put um, let's put this that way. Can you see that there? In this particular example, we've got blues, violets, greens, yellows, and then so you've got the cold end of the scale. You remember when we said on the the previous one that the the color wheel is actually split in half to cool colors to warm colors, so the cooler the color the more receding it is um, the warmer the color the more and more it advances so if you look at that actual spectrum of color there the yellow looks a lot further in front and a lot brighter even though it's all they're all the same size as squares that looks a lot more dominant than the rest of them and then the blue looks as if it's receding away so your colors can recede or they can advance you can bring a color you can bring a subject forward by warming it by throwing it back by cooling it down so that's that's another thing you need to think of is balancing uh, the warm and the cool colors together as well okay and in the, in the bottom example as you can see again all i've done is just put this on a bit of an angle but it looks as if the red is a lot further forward than the blue again by that's a nice warm tone and that's a cool tone it gives just gives it that effect that that is a bit further in the distance than that and again this is advancing and that is receiving so when somebody says to you um, you want to think about advancing or receding the colors so anything in the background like we said distant mountains and things like that they need to be cooler a lot cooler so it gives them it looks when you look at the painting and, and, and the, the the foreground wants to be a little bit warmer and that just gives it that little bit of depth it's a play of, of color and so an optical illusion that's all painting is is an optical illusion but it's balancing composition and vanishing points together with the right combination of colors to get that the look like as if it's receding into the background or going away into the painting when it's all actually just painted on a flat surface there you go so that's a receding and advancing colors let's put that there so we won't lose that and bring our board back up so looking at our board we know the makeup of a color is of is being a hue its intensity and its value that's the makeup of a color now we also know that we can change the, the the looks of those colors by adding some white so we can tint the colors and if we add some black we can shade down the colors if we add a black and a white or a gray and then we can actually tone down the colors now what happens when you mix a red and a green together and you bring them into the center they actually neutralize each other 
actually neutralise each other off. So they go to a grey tone. And um, I just want to show you how that happens. One second, I just need to get a canvas up and I'll be back. Yes. Okay, so looking at our board, if we just go into our palette and get a little bit of red and put some red up here and bring it down like that. And you can see this is um, an old palette, uh, an old canvas that I used in a previous tutorial, um, which was the um, color, the makeup, not a makeup of a color, what was it, Clive? It was the, um, the brand, the color brand. So if that's something you want to I'll go and have a look at, I'll put a link below and um, I'll put um, a little annotation, little annotations, I like annotations, put a little annotation there for you. So if you want to go and check that one out. Okay, so there's your compliments. And as they meet, they start to grey each other out. That's all we are doing is greying this colour out. So that's red and green mixed together. And you can see it starting to go grey. So you can make a grey through any complement. Oops, I just put my brush in the yellow. <laughs> you can make a, a grey um, through any any complement so that's uh, you could do a red orange and a blue green or you can do a green and a red obviously a yellow green and a red violet and you will get different combinations of that now let's this out of curiosity let's add a little bit of white to that and see what we actually got there because that's the mass tone so if we add in a little bit of white to it we can actually take it down and see exactly what type of grey that is actually made and it's made like a, a brown, a brown grey and you can see the more white I add to that the greyer that's going to get so it's quite a nice warm grey and then obviously the more white you add or the more, more of a, you're making it into more of a tint you can get that down to a nice nice um, grey buff colour. Now when you do the colour charts, um, as I did plan on actually taking you through one of those, you want to play around with these type of colours. You know what happens if I if I start mixing whites, different grades of uh, gradients of white or different amounts of white to the red, what am I going to get? Then you're going to get obviously you're going to get pinks what if you know and with the greens you and then you could start what, what if i mix black to this and and that's exactly what those how those color charts were made we'll go through one very quickly before the end of this but as you can see we've got a nice gray like a um, a buff gray color there and obviously with different combinations of complements let's just say a blue and orange then you're going to get a different type of gray again so you don't just make greys by mixing blacks and whites. So yeah, so you don't just have to mix black and white to get a grey. Now, if you go through the different combinations and ask colours directly operate op operation <laughs> opposite, opposite each other. If you go all the colours opposite each other, like you've got orange and blue and blue, uh, you've got blue, green and red, orange and red and green and yellow, green and violet, blah, blah, blah. So we've got a colour wheel, go around the opposites, mix those two colours together and then you're going to get a neutral, a grey. And then add a little bit of white to that to increase its, um, uh, you tint them up or increase its value, brighten it up. And then you'll see the actual colour, the actual grey that you've got. Because the colour you mix originally is what they call a mass tone, that's the mass colour. And then you can change it with different aspects. You can add white and you can add black to shade it, you can add white to tint it. You can change the colours as we explained on the first couple of lessons. So um, yeah, that is a very, very easy, easy way to get a grey. Now we've got browns, 
blacks, whites, beiges, they're all classed as neutral. So that is a neutral color. So bear that in mind as well. So browns are actually classed as neutrals. So it, everything seems to go with like a beigey color. Don't know why, it, it, it just seems to sit right. Just one of them things, I think. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is the actual makeup of colors. Now, not the actual way they made up, but the actual way they actually affect us. So if you can look at like blues, dark blues, there's all different shades of blues and, and purplies and all that type of thing. And that is class, that's a very, very moody type of color. So it, it sets a specific mood. And I would say it could be like a dark, mysterious, quite threatening type of colour. So anything that's in, in that type of makeup there can, can be thought of in that particular way. So if you, if you want an atmosphere, atmosphere or you want like a moonlit night, and I've seen a painting that one of my um, members of Clive's art family group have done, and I think she used like a blues and a Payne's greys, and then it was a really nice moody scene it set the, the mood for that painting and that's using all different tones and shades and values of that type of color so there you go so it sets the mood as well so the the other type of um color is that type of color there and light and bright colors are usually considered to be pleasant colors and if they aren't too bright, then they're not that they, they, they're comfortable to view. So you don't want them too bright, but you want a, you want a nice a nice bright type of color. And there's all yellows and greens and that in there, so they're quite comforting, comforting really. And then you're looking at reds and things like that, and you know that love. And so if you put a if you've got a lot of grass, you've seen me doing paintings in the past. And I'm doing a lot of trees and grasses and all that. And I say, well, just drop a couple of colours in here now. And more often than not, in the grass, I'll put a couple of red dots to represent some flowers. Now, the complement of green is red. And what it does, it just makes it pop like that. It just catches the eye. That little bit of red in a painting can actually sell a painting. And I've learned that one a long time ago. When you put um, colours together like red, green and blue, they look quite gaudy, quite harsh, as you can see. They're quite hard against the eyes as well. So don't try not to put that type of combination together because they, they get quite harsh and gaudy and, and you don't want that in your paintings. So we'll just put these on the canvas. Let's just move my colour wheel slightly. There you go. And... Um, Let's think of something else we can move on to. Yes. Okay, the, uh, this is uh, monochromatic. It is basically um, one color that's broken down into all different values. You've got, you've got the tints and the shades in there and you can paint a painting um, with just one color by changing its value, by adding tints and tones and shades. Then you can actually paint what they call a, mono, a monochromatic painting. So that's one color, but you're just changing the value, or adding, making the tones and shades, and you're just changing that particular color to suit your needs. So that's monochromatic, one color, basically. Chromatic, monochromatic is one color in its different forms. Okay, so, what I'm going to be looking at now is anuliglus. Anu, an, an, anuliglus. Anuliglus. Can I get it right? Anuliglus. 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 Okay. We're going to be looking at that one there. <laughs> this uses the colors. Uh, the, oh, God. Struth. I'm not going to cut this. It's too funny. This uses the colors on the, uh, the color wheel. Um there that are actually next to each other um it would help if i put my color wheel right um so you're saying an anuliglus color is like a complement is red or and red orange put together so this is the ones directly next to each other so um 
yeah so anuliguous basically <laughs> basically means one color that is is uh, as a dominant color now riley other colors are, are used to enrich that scheme the anuliguous scheme <laughs> is similar to the monochromatic but um it, it just offers a little bit more of a of play within that painting <laughs> so let's let's put let's put let's put those into place you think it's easy doing these videos <laughs> no i just not edit them anymore i'm having too much fun <laughs> right, let's get to the canvas okay so let's put a bit of red in there this is an annual ligurus <laughs> Compliment. So that's red. And what's directly next to it on the um, on the colour wheel is orange. So a red and orange really, as far as a complement is concerned, they can be used quite nicely together. So as you go around the colour wheel, you'd have a, an orange and a yellow orange or you'd have a yellow orange and a yellow or you'd have a yellow green and a green etc 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 so an anuligorous complement is a a color a complementary color that's directly next to it on the color wheel so in this case it's red and red orange now we've already discussed complementary colors which is the color that we normally associate or the terminology that we normally associate with um, complements. In this case, we discussed red. And we talked about dominance and subdominance and receding and advancing. So the um, complement of red is green. I've stopped laughing now, so I'm okay. Put a shaft together, boy, as my father used to say. Okay. A split complementary. So let's have a look at the actual color wheel. So we're having a uh, we're going red. Let's go red, Clive. So red. Is our starting point. Now, a split complementary colour basically is exactly what it says on the tin. Yes, it is. So it'd be green. Well, let's go green. The split complementary of that complement would be green, which is the complement of red. But the colour that's directly adjacent to the green is a blue green. So let's just mix up a little bit of blue green. Don't go into purple, Clive. It doesn't work. So we've got a bit of blue green. It may look a bit dark. Don't worry too much about it. I'm not worried anymore. <laughs> right. So a split complementary is basically um, a complement split by the two complements directly opposite. In this case, red and green and blue green will sit really well together on a colour scheme. I wish I hadn't started this to skip me headache. <laughs> now, a triadic um, complement is three colours equally spaced around the colour wheel. So that would be red, blue, and yellow in this case. So let's let's put let's put come on stick on me. Don't give me any drip today. All right, let's put our red in. Oh, Clive, you picked up white. <laughs> Not having much luck tonight, people. Okay, let's put red. So that's one that will sit. This is a, a triadic colour. So any triangle of colours, basically, triadic, triangle, 
any colors that are equally spaced around the color wheel should in theory work well together and they will sit really well as complements there you go red yellow and blue it's just settings to be primaries So a triadic colour or, or um, complement, in this case it would be orange, um, green and violet, or red, yellow and blue and as you turn around, so it's the triangle of colours that will work together. Now to really confuse myself, I've decided that I'm going to explain a triadic double. <laughs> So look for look forward to this one because I haven't taught I haven't discussed this before not even with my students so um, yeah let's see if I get it right nice. okay so triadic doubles now we talked about annuligruous well this is basically an annuligruous complement or and what's otherwise known is a triadic double okay so what I mean by that is you've got red in this case and an orange which will work well together because as we've just discussed in the annual Ligurus, that they are complementary to each other so on our color wheel if we have a look at red and red orange directly opposite that is green and yellow green so the triadic double color so what did i say and green <laughs> yellow green let's put the green in there like that and let's put a little bit of yellow with that let's make that a nice yellow green just so we can see the difference okay Bit more yellow five okay you can see how what's happening here now can't you so let's have a look what we do red let's do um let's do blue that side let's get some let's get some blue now there because we know that works well together And what's directly opposite blue is a, um, a blue violet. So let's make a little bit of red, a bit of violet. Let's get a bit of violet. One second, people. I'm just going to make some violet. There you go. Red and blue, and violet. So what's opposite blue? it's orange so we need some orange and what's opposite violet is um <laughs> oh no what have you done blue of a blue violet what have i done ah oh, that should be blue violet sorry so that's blue and blue violet and we need yellow orange so that's blue violet that should be a blue violet i'm so sorry let's put a little bit of blue on there there we go so we need blue as blue and blue violet and we need um the opposite of blue violet is um is um, yellow orange so let's make an orange that's a lot more yellow there we go boom, boom, boom. And there very easily is your triadic doubles um, so you can use that as a color scheme okay so receding and advancing colors as we have discussed 
and you can see that things in the distance are a lot cooler or a lot bluer and the things in, in the foreground can be a lot warmer. Um, we've discussed basic complements where, where we've got a dominant dominance of a colour. In this case, it's red to green. And in this case, the dominance is green to red. But if we start playing with colours that don't really sit well together, then we get that really upsetting look of a colour and it can throw your eye out dramatically. We've also discussed colours that don't really sit well together. They look quite gaudy, they look quite frightening, they look harsh. So we've got to try and to avoid uh, colour combinations like that. We've also discussed how we can change the mood of a painting um, to give us a, some, uh, a, a dramatic look um, by using the colour combinations there and also the brightness of colours as well can give us a nice pleasant looking um, painting. We've discussed monochromatic which is the way we actually use one particular colour doesn't matter what colour, as long as we've got different values and shades, tints, tones, all those things that we've just discussed, but using just one colour in its entirety to build up a painting. So you don't have to have loads of colour, uh, loads of tubes of paint. Anuligous colours, um, the complements are colours that are sitting adjacent to each other on the um, colour wheel. So if you wanted to paint the painting, Think about colour combinations that actually sit together on the colour wheel. When we talk about complements in a normal sense, um, that we all understand, we always we always think of complements being colours that sit well together, which are directly opposite each other on the colour wheel. In this instance, I've got a red and a green, as we've discussed on there. I talked about dominance. Split complementary colours is when you've got a colour that's on the colour wheel, in this instance it's red, and directly opposite you've got it split into two complements there. So you've got the two of the colours that actually sit together on the colour wheel. So a green and a blue-green and a red in this particular instance would sit really nice in a colour scheme. The other thing you want to think of is triadic uh, uh, complements, where it is any three colours that are basically as a triangle around the colour wheel, doesn't matter what colours, as long as they sit within that triangular um, a frame, if you want, um, like a blue, a red and a yellow, will sit well together on a colour scheme. The other thing is triadic doubles, where you've got um, a red and a red orange will sit against, lovely against a yellow, uh, uh, um, a yellow green and a blue green and etc etc so that's basically compliments in a nutshell by Clive from Clive's Art <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh tonight I'm not too sure exactly what this looks like we'll find out when I edit it <laughs> but there we are so yes get a book basically get a book go on the internet but get a book if you want to get a book it, you, you really do need a, a, a colour mixing recipe book I've got one here somewhere a good one here somewhere um, Where's it to? Oh, I got one here somewhere. Hang on. Oh, there it is. I got one. There we are. Right. I got a, um, a colour mixing book. Um, and this is actually by Walter Foster. I mentioned in the past by William F. Powell. No relationship by any chance. I wish it was. Perhaps I could borrow a few quid off him. But um, yeah, nice to have a surname like that. I think that's a really good surname. And then, um, yeah, this goes through all your colour cards. Um, it goes through portrait colours and colour recipes. And it, it talks about oils and watercolours. Um, it's, it's a really, really good, really good book. It goes on about portraits. Look, um, this particular one retailed at $14.99, which is approximately $20. Um, if you've got the opportunity to go and buy one then buy one i've got loads of books in the studio and i use them for reference all the time i'm constantly in a book or on um wikipedia and things like this where this is where i pick up a lot of the a lot of skills and i'll if i want to if i want to learn about something i go and study 
Yes, and I don't have to pay a tutor, and I've been doing that all my life, so I've saved myself a fortune. Just wish I put it in the bank. <laughs> okay, um, that's it. It's all wrapped up. That's Colour Theory in a nutshell. So you've got three videos to watch. I'll put the links for the two of them, that are the previous ones that are below. So this wraps that up. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of use. If it has, please leave me a comment like share and subscribe if you haven't already done so um, click on these links here they will take you into other playlists or click on the little subscribe button above my head if you're watching this on a pc uh, or there's a subscribe button just below in the description again where you'll find all my playlists so anything you want to know please email me links are below um, Join me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much again for watching. And uh, my name is Clive from Clive's Art. Please visit my web website, which is clivesart.co.uk, where there's loads of updates in there. And I do weekly updates every Sunday. So if you want to know what's coming along, subscribe. And, and every Sunday, you'll get a link to a video which is telling you what's coming up that next week. Um, and thank you very much. So yes, um, have a nice day, a nice week, a nice month, a nice year, because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this. My name is Clive from Clive's Art. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Nice.